This meeting is being recorded. Hello. 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 Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes, okay. Teacher. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Let's begin. Um, just give me a second as I go full screen. <clears throat> Happy Wednesday, everybody. <laughs> okay. Okay. There it is. Now, as usual, the first thing we're going to do is attendance calling. Okay, here we go. Alejandra Cristina Magaña Campos. Is Alejandra Cristina Magaña here? Astrid Michelle Flores Escobar. Astrid Michelle Flores Escobar. Carlos Alfredo Ramos Aguila. Presente. Present. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, Claudia Yanet Iraeta Martinez. Good evening, teacher. Person. Good evening. Hello, thank you. Ever de Jesús Candray Montano. Present, sir. Thank you. Gabriela Stephanie Cortez de Martinez. Gabriela Stephanie Cortez de Martinez. No. Gladys Imelda Sánchez. Gladys Imelda Sánchez. Yasmín Vanessa Sosa Juárez. Yasmín Vanessa Sosa Juárez. José Luis Hernández Flores. Present teacher. Thank you. Josué Isaías Najarro. Present teacher. Thank you. Lilian Estela Portillo García. Present teacher. Thank you. Luis Fernando Enrique Herrera. Present teacher. Thank you. Manuel Aristides Murcia. I'm here. Thank you. Olivia Emanuel Osorio Panameño. Present teacher. Thank you. Paola Maria Alvarado Cerón. Paola Maria Alvarado Cerón. Rosa Esmeralda Hernández de Flores. Rosa Esmeralda Hernández de Flores. Thank you. Sandra Cecilia Munguía. Sandra Cecilia Munguía. Thank you. Walter René Quintanilla González. Present teacher. Thank you. Jenny Maritza Sánchez Flores. Present teacher. Thank you. I'm calling some names again. Alejandra Cristina Magaña Campos. Alejandra Cristina Magaña Campos. Astrid Michelle Flores Escobar. Present. Thank you. Gabriela Stephanie Cortez de Martinez. Gabriela Stephanie Cortez de Martinez. Gladys Imelda Sánchez. Gladys Imelda Sánchez. Yasmín Vanessa Sosa Juárez. Yasmín Vanessa Sosa Juárez. Olivia Emanuel, no, sorry. Olivia Emanuel ya está. Paola María Alvarado Cerón. Paola Mari, María Alvarado Cerón. Okay. I'm going to call the attendance once again at the end of the class. Let's do this. Everybody, welcome. This is Inglés Preavanzado, Módulo 2. And that's me, Ivan Doyang, at your service. Once again, this is session 15 out of 16 and today is February the 8th of 2023 or 2023 whichever you prefer welcome once again 
let's begin. So um, as usual, we're going to have a short review on the contents that we studied yesterday. So bear with me for a second as we go through them. So yesterday we studied the use of in. And when do we use in? We use in for periods of time, especially when they take a long time. You say in June, June is a month. That's 30 days. Yeah, 30 days. That's a long time. So in June, in 2012 or in 2012, in the 1990s, that was a decade, 10 years. It's a long time. In the 20th century, that was 100 years. It's a long time. In the past, also a long time. In winter, we have a chat entry here. Gabriela Stefani. Okay, Gabriela Stefani is connected. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Gabriela Stefani. Your attendance has been recorded. Okay. So we say um, in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening. Remember that if you say it in singular form, you refer to this day. You say in the morning, normally you refer to today in the morning. If you say in the afternoon, you're referring to today in the afternoon. In the evening, that means tonight, okay? Today in the evening. But if you use it in plural form, that means you're referring to mornings, afternoons, and evenings in general. For example, in my case, I can say I work in the evenings which is what I'm doing right now, okay? Or you can say, I study English in the evenings, in plural. So, but you have to be careful with this. If you mention the specific uh, day, you have to use the preposition on, not in. So you say on Friday morning or on Friday mornings, on Sunday afternoon or on Sunday afternoons, and on Monday evening or on Monday evenings. So we say that, sorry, I'll see you in the morning. I'll see you on Friday morning. Do you work in the evenings? I do. Do you work on Saturday evenings? Now look, we say that something will happen in a few minutes, in six months, etc. Like this, the train will be leaving in a few minutes. That means a few minutes from now. Andy has gone away. He'll be back in a week. That means in a week from now. And they'll be here in a moment. That means a moment from now, very soon. We also use in to say how long it takes to do something. Example, I learned to drive in four weeks. That means it took me four weeks to learn. Review from yesterday. Also for in sense. We use for and since to say how long, okay? And normally with the present perfect. Example, Rachel is in Brazil. She has been there for three days or she has been there since Monday, okay? We use for plus a period of time as we studied on Monday. So you say for three days, for two years, etc. Like this, for three days, for an hour, for a week for a month, for five years, for 10 minutes, for two hours, for four weeks, for six months, for a long time. Now, what about since? We use since plus the start of the period of time. We're talking about a period of time again, but this time we're only mentioning the beginning of the period of time, not the complete period of time. Examples, you say since Monday, desde el lunes, since nine, since July 4th, since January, since 2000, since Wednesday, since 12.30, since my birthday, since I was 10 years old, since we arrived. Examples, David has been in Canada for six months. Six months is a period of time, so you use four. David has been in Canada since January. That means he arrived in Canada in Canada, I'm sorry, in January, and has been there ever since. Uh, we've been waiting for two hours. We've been waiting since nine. We have lived in Chicago for a long time. We have lived in Chicago since I was 10 years old. That's a long time. So what about ago? Ago means before now. Examples. 
Anna started her new job three weeks ago. That means three weeks before now. When did Tom leave? 10 minutes ago. That means 10 minutes before now. I had dinner an hour ago. And life was very different 100 years ago. Now, be very careful with this because we use ago only with the past simple. Like started, did, had, was, etc. Examples. When did Rachel arrive in Brazil? This is a question in past simple. So when did Rachel arrive in Brazil? She arrived in Brazil three days ago. You use ago only with the past simple. But what about, let's go back, for and since. You use for and since with the present perfect, like this. How long has she been, that's present perfect, in Brazil? She has been in Brazil for three days. Or she has been in Brazil since Monday. Okay? It's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, three days. That's the idea. So remember, you use ago with the past simple. You use for and since with the present perfect. So that's a very important, you know, tip right there. And uh, finally, we have this. Let's take a look. Yeah. From, to, and since. We use from and to to signal the beginning and the end of a period of time. Okay, we're talking about a period of time. Normally we use for, but if you want to signal, if you want to mention the beginning and the end of that period of time, then you, ha you have to use from and to, like this. We lived in Japan from 2007 to 2014 or 2014. From to, the beginning of the period of time and the end of the period of time. I work from Monday to Friday. We start on Monday, we finish on Friday. So I work from Monday to Friday. Alternatively, you can also say from and until. It's not as common, but it's possible. Okay, so you can do it if you want. Although I recommend using from and to because it's much more common. So we lived in Japan from 2007 until 2014. Or simply, you can say, we lived in Japan until 2014. Basically, until is the opposite of since. We use since plus a time in the past to now, the beginning of a period of time. We use since after the present perfect. We lived in Japan from 2007 to 2014. We lived in Japan until 2014. Now we live in Denver. We came to Denver in 2014. That means, that means, I'm sorry, we have lived in Denver since 2014. That means from 2014 until now. Now, that's a review uh, of yesterday's content. What we're going to do now is some extra practice. Well, not extra practice because this is a knowledge check. Everybody take a look. This is knowledge check 5.4. And it's specifically here. I'm going to show it to you right here. This one. The one about the Beatles. Right? It's the same exercise, basically. So what are we going to do? I want you to use the prepositions. Um, let me show them to you. Let's just go back a few slides. Ooh, way back. Give me a moment. Thank you, I just sneezed. Okay, uh, here, referring to a time in the past. So what do you have to use? During, in, ago, since, for, from, and to. That's the idea. So going back, give me a second. Again, sorry, perdón, estoy estornudando un poco. Okay. All right, so going back, just give me a moment. Oof, 
It's taking a while. Just give me a second. Okay, here we are. This is the beginning of today's class. A go. Okay. So um, here's the thing. I believe uh, the first one in the platform is a bit different. In reality, it should be a different answer right here. So number one, who can help me read the first one until the, uh, uh, you, you have to stop up to the period, okay? There's a period right here, 50 years period. That's where you stop. Let's see, we have a chat entry. Gladys Imelda just joined us. Okay, Gladys, no problem. Welcome. I'm registering your attendance right now. Thank you. Okay, so number one, who can tell me? If you know the answer, please raise your hand. And Lilian Estela. Rock music have been popular for more than 50 years. That is correct. Thank you, Lilian. Rock music has been popular for more than 50 years. Thank you very much. What about the second one, up to the period, 1960s? Raise your hand if you know the answer, please. Jasmine Vanessa. Um, the Beatles were a well-known English band during the 1960s. The the, okay, let's see. The Beatles were a well-known English band during the 1960s. That is correct. Thank you, Jasmine. Very good. Okay, the third one, please. Rosa Esmeralda, up to the period, 1970. You have three right here. Uh, um, four. Okay, but can you read the sentence, please? Okay. Mm -hmm. They performed. Si me ayuda leyendo la oración. They performed together. Mm-hmm. Four. Yes. Ten years. Ten years. Ten years. Mm -hmm. And then? And then, um, and then. Mm -hmm. They performed together for and ten years. From? From 1960. Uh, two. Two. Mm -hmm. And the year? Uh, 19. Seven. Correct. Thank you, Rosa. They performed together for 10 years from 1960 to 1970. Thank you very much. Good. So in 2003, the Beatles released another album, even though two of the original members had already died. What about the next one? Volunteer, please. Who can help me read it? Gladys Imelda and then Jenny Sanchez, you go for the second paragraph. Oh. The album, the album was recorded in 1969, mm -hmm. nearly four years ago. Correct. The album was recorded in 1969, nearly four years ago. Thank you, Gladys. Uh, Jenny Sanchez, what about number two? Let's read about the exploration sp spacecraft. In 2003, mm -hmm. the United States launched two Mars exploration space, spacecraft. Correct. Thank you. That is correct. In 2003. The next one. Who can help me read it? Mm -hmm. Vamos, vamos. Participemos. Olivia Osorio. Thank you. Uh, their nation was lasted for more than uh, years. 
to mm -hmm. gather information about the rocks. The rocks? Soil and atmosphere of Mars, ocean rovers, call it spirit and opportunity. Thank you. Yeah, their mission, which lasted for more than a year, was to gather information about the rocks, soil, and atmosphere on Mars using robbers called spirit and opportunity. Thank you, Olivia. That is correct. Very good. What about the next one? Please, a volunteer, raise your hand, your virtual hand. Who wants to try the next one, please? Vamos, sin miedo, atrevámonos a participar. Solo los mismos participan. A otros solo les conozco la voz cuando me dicen present teacher. Y de ahí no los escucho toda la clase. Ok, come on. What about the next one? No participants today. Just me and Vanessa. Thank you very much. The rovers function longer than any more expected. Scientists thought they will last for only four months on Mars. Thank you. Yeah, scientists thought they would last for only four months on Mars. Very good. Thank you, Jasmine. And the last one, who can help me? Raise your hand, please. Who can help me with this one? Walter René. And then Paola Maria, you go for the next one, I promise. Okay. So, Walter. Think that time they have sent back to sound of the picture of the surface of Mars. Since that time, they have sent back thousands of pictures, thousands of live pictures of the surface of Mars. Thank you, Walter. That is correct. Now we have an extra exercise here. This is not in the platform and it's not in the manual. Take a look. Complete the sentences. You have to use words from the box. And the words are ago, for, from, in, since, and to. You can repeat them because there are eight. Well, actually, there are like 10 spaces, I believe, or nine. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine spaces, and there are only six options. So you can use them a second time, no problem. You can repeat them. So example, jazz, jazz, I'm sorry, first became popular in the 1920s. What about number two? Who wants to try? Paola, I don't know if you have this. Uh, we have Jenny Sanchez and Luis Fernando. Okay, just, just a second, then Lilian. Pero Paola quería participar ahí. Mantengan la manita levantada, no la vayan a bajar, porque si no se me olvida después. Paola, are you there? Uh, the cell phone was invited about four, four, 40? 14, 40 years, years, um, three, uh, three signs. Well, no, there is usually one word that goes at the end all the time. It's a bit different. Okay, but but thank you, uh, Paola. What about Jenny Sanchez? What number, teacher? Number two. The cell phone was invented about 40 years ago. 40 years ago, okay, that's right. The cell phone was invented about 40 years ago, past simple in passive voice. That's correct. Number three, Luis Fernando. Brasilia has been the capital city of Brazil since 1960. Brasilia has been the capital city of Brazil since 1960. That is correct. Thank you, Luis Fernando. 
Lilian Estela, number four. The first laptop was produced in 1981. That is correct. The first laptop was produced in 1981. Good. I'm sorry? The year that I born. The year you were born. Okay. Okay. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I was born in 1985. So I am 37 now. I'm turning 38 this year. Okay. Number five, Rosa Esmeralda. Mexico has been in Britain. Um, more. I'm sorry. Mexico uh -huh, has Mex been independent. Independent. Um, independent. Um. Mm -hmm. Two more. To more than 200 yeah. years. Mm, yeah. No, sorry, it's a different preposition. But thank you, Rosa. What about Ever de Jesus? What do you have? Which one is your number five? Number five, yeah. Mm, Mexico has been independent uh, for more than. Yeah. 200 years? Correct. Mexico has been independent for more than 200 years. Thank you, Ever. Very good. Carlos Alfredo, number six. War, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, war, war, war uh, second. Two, last. World War Second. Ah, World War II. World War Second, last. From night. 19 or in 39 mm -hmm. to 1945. That's correct. Where we're second lasted from 1939 to 1945. That is correct. Thank you, Carlos. What about number seven? Who wants to try? Raise your hand, please. Sandra Cecilia. Vietnam was separated into two parts since about uh, 20 years. Since about 20 years. Mm, not really. It's a different one. But thank you. Um, Alejandra Magaña, number seven. Vietnam was separated in two parts for about 20 years. We separate into two parts for about 20 years. Yeah, that's right. Correct, for about 20 years. Thank you. And uh, thank you, Alejandra. And number eight, Rosa Esmeralda. Um, eight in West Germany has been only, only United, United. United. Uh, in? In 1990. In well, but if you notice, there's there's something here. Have been united. That's present perfect. Have been united. Uh huh. Um, have been. Again. Uh, have been united. Uh. In nineteen. In nineteen ninety. Nineteen ninety. Okay, uh, no, sorry, it's not in. It's a different preposition. But thank you, Rosa. Josue Isaias, can you help us? Um, East and West Germany has been united uh, since, since 1990. Yeah, East and West Germany have been united since 1990. Okay, yeah after the Berlin Wall thing. So um, that's correct. Thank you, Jose Isaias. Very good. Okay, great. So that was some extra practice on the use of these prepositions to talk about the past. So I hope this is clear. 
And now we're going to move on to a different activity. We're going to study some vocabulary. And what's that? Word power, this is section 5.5, historic events. So what are you going to do? Take a look, match each word with the best example, then compare with a partner. So um, I believe you have done this, right? Because um, it's one of the exercises that you should have completed in the platform. So let's take a look at it. The first one is achievement. Who knows this one? What is, what is an example of an achievement? Raise your hand. Rosa. The number, uh, the, the prepared three. Okay, uh, letter, what letter? Um, what letter? Letter A. Letter A. Uh -huh. The luxury ship Titanic sank in the North Atlantic Ocean in 1912. This one, letter A? Yeah. Um, not exactly. It's actually a different one. Uh, but thank you for your participation. Josue Isaias. Um, number one, letter G. Letter G. That's right. Yes. Can you can you help me read it, please? Okay. In 19, um, 1953. Uh, I'm sorry. 1953. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, Sir Edmund Hillary mm -hmm. and the uh, Sherpa uh, Sherpa Tenzing Norway uh, were the first to reach the summit of Mount Everest. Yeah, they were the first to reach the summit of Mount Everest. That's an achievement. And what is what is achievement? What is the meaning of achievement? Or how do you say achievement in Spanish? Logro. Un logro. That's right. Okay. Something that, uh, let's say, a task or a goal that initially was considered very difficult and it was difficult, but after a lot of effort, it could be done. Okay. That's an achievement. So, yeah, in 1953, Sid Edmund Hillary and the Sherpa Tenzing Nor. 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 I don't know how to write, how to read that, were the first to reach the summit. The summit of, I'm sorry, of Mount Everest. That's an achievement. Thank you, Josue Isaias. What about number two, assassination? Jenny Sanchez. Letter F. Letter US, F. Mm -hmm. US President John F. Kennedy was shot to death in 1963. In 1963, that is correct. So we have letter F, U.S. President John F. Kennedy was shot to death in 1963. Now, what about this? Do you have the word assassination? Okay. There is also the word kill, the word murder, assassination. There's also man's slaughter okay so kill is a verb it's in general what you, what a person does if you take the life of another person you kill the person what about murder means to kill a person intentionally in other words if you want to kill someone and you kill someone that's murder Okay, that's the idea. Assassination, assassination is murder too, but murder, or let's say is the murder of uh, an important person for religious or political reasons. It's an assassination. For example, in El Salvador, we had the assassination of Monsignor Romero, for example. That's an example of an assassination, okay? It's the murder of an important or popular person for religious or political reasons. And then 
what's manslaughter? Okay. Manslaughter is when a person kills another person by accident. Okay. For example, if somebody is driving down the street and then somebody was crossing the street in the dark and probably they didn't see this person and they hit the person and the person dies, then uh, that person is uh, guilty of manslaughter. That means he killed the other person, but it was an accident. I mean, he didn't want to do it. Okay, but it's a crime anyway. So that's it. So you have here, number two is assassination. Okay, assassination letter F, the example. U.S. President John F. Kennedy was shot to death in 1963. That's how it is. Alejandra Magaña, number three, please. Disaster. The letter A. The letter A. The Titanic sank in the North Atlantic Ocean in 1912. That is correct. Okay, that's an example of a disaster. Thank you, Alejandra. The luxury ship Titanic sank in the North Atlantic Ocean in 1912. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Thank you very much. What about number four? Who has this one? Number four. Sandra Cecilia. Letter D. Discovery, letter D. Mm -hmm. Please, please. Uh, dinosaur, dinosaurs with feathers, with feathers, and four wing was found in China. Yeah, thank you. In two thousand three, a dinosaur with feathers and four wings was found in China. Okay, that's a discovery. Okay, so it's letter D. Thank you, Sandra. Rosa Esmeralda, number five, epidemic. Mm, letter F. Letter F. Yeah. But letter F was number two, assassination. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Um. Um. Letter E. Letter E, that is correct, okay. Since the late 1970s, HIV has infected an estimated 58 million people. Mm -hmm. The human immunodeficiency virus, so HIV. Thank you, uh, Rosa. What about number six, Ever de Jesus Candray, and then Jose Luis, number seven. Number six, invention. Okay, it's an invention. I think a little bit. The solar telephone was developed in Sweden about 25 years ago. Yeah, the, cellu the cellular telephone was developed in Sweden about 25 years ago. Yeah, it was in Sweden and also in Finland. I believe, uh, yeah, Sweden and Finland. The cellular telephone was developed in Sweden about 25 years ago. It's more than 25 years now, okay, because the the book is a little old, okay, so that's definitely more than 25. But thank you, Ever de Jesus. Number seven, Jose Luis Hernandez. Here are these facts. I think it's letter C. That's correct. Four planes were hijacked in the United States on September 11th. 21. 2001. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Four planes were hijacked in the United States on September the 11th, 2001. Okay, so um, do you know the meaning of hijack? It's another crime. Hijack means to take control of a vehicle 
illegally. Okay. So if you remember, this is what happened in 9-11, a long, long time ago, you know, the year 2001, uh, when there was a terrorist attack on the World Trade Center, you know, in the United States. So four planes were hijacked. That means the terrorists took control of the airplanes, illegally, of course, by force. So they were hijacked. Now, you know that when you go, um, to the airport and when you are on a plane there are certain words that you cannot even pronounce because it is illegal to say those words you know this is an example of one of them if you're in a plane if you're in an airplane you cannot say the word hijack if you say the word hijack they will arrest you also if you say the word bomb on an airplane they will arrest you immediately Okay, so you have to be very careful right there. This there's a joke actually. Okay, um, do you know the meaning of pun? Pun in Spanish is juego de palabras. So uh, there's a joke. It's 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 a joke, very silly joke. If you, I'm going to type it in. That's the joke. So it goes, if you walk into a plane and you see a friend of yours named Jack inside, don't say out loud, hi, Jack, okay? Or they will arrest you. That's the idea. Because it sounds exactly like the word hijack, okay? Which is illegal. You don't say that word in the plane. So um, what's next? Uh, thank you for this. Okay, uh, let's let's review the words. We have uh, achievement. Okay, un logro, an assassination, un asesinato de alguien importante, a disaster, es un desastre, a discovery, un descubrimiento, an epidemic, una epidemia, an invention, un invento, and a terrorist act, un acto terrorista. So, give another example for each word in part A. What about an achievement? What do you consider an achievement? What can be considered an achievement? Mm -hmm. Any ideas? Maybe this one is difficult. Uh, we have number two, assassination. I gave you an example, the assassination of Monsignor Romero, right? What about a disaster? What, what disasters do you know? Josué Isaías. Uh, an example of a key achievement. Uh, oh, okay. Maybe um, uh, to reduce the gangs in our country. Okay. Yeah, that sounds like an achievement. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Uh, no vamos a entrar en mucho detalle porque <laughs> hay opiniones divididas, ¿verdad? En que todo lo que se refiere a política, pero sí. Puede ser un buen ejemplo. Okay, there's a reduction of gang activity in the country. So um, yeah, that can be considered an achievement. Yeah, something that was never done before has been done now. Okay, it's there is less violence in the country now. So yeah, there's an achievement right there. Okay, thank you, Jose Isaias. Okay, um, an example of a disaster. Jenny Sanchez. The air in Turkish. Oh, yes. Okay. There was an earthquake in Turkey. Yeah, I saw the video. A, a whole building collapsed. Okay. I saw the video. It was horrible. I imagine many people died there. Oof. But there are also a lot of survivors, which is good. But poor people. But yeah, that's a disaster. That's for sure. Okay. Good. What about a discovery? Can you give me an example of a discovery? Mm -hmm. Ever de Jesus. One example that would be um, the American discovery 
of um, Cristobal Colón. Ah, okay, the discovery of America by Christopher Columbus. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. You can say that the discovery of America by Christopher Columbus, uh, who discovered America accidentally. <laughs> Technically, <laughs> he was looking for a, a different way to India, but in the end, well, he ended up in in the American continent. So yeah. Although according to historians, you know, America had been discovered before by the Vikings, according to historians. Okay, so it's debatable, right? So, but yeah, that's an example. Good example. Thank you, Ever. What about epidemic? Well, today we don't talk about epidemics. We talk about pandemics, okay, which is much more dangerous. Um, let's move on to something a little bit more cheerful. Number six, invention. How about invention? What's, a, what's an example of, a, of an invention? What can you mention? Luis Fernando. Yes, the, the smartphone by Apple Industries. Mm -hmm. Yeah, technically Apple, technically Apple created the, you know, touch controls, you know, on smartphones. So yeah, that is true. I remember yeah. I saw the, I saw the, the presentation by Steve Jobs. Okay, he was saying stuff like, "We're going to eliminate all the bottoms and we're going to make it touch." So that. Uh, Hi, <laughs> hello, Lillian. <laughs> okay. Um, what about number seven, terrorist act? Can you mention an example of a terrorist act? There are a lot <laughs> in the world, besides 9/11, of course. Another, well, another example of a terrorist act. Mm -hmm. No ideas right now about terrorist acts? There are many, right? There are bombings, there are people who shoot other people in movie theaters and, 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 and stuff, okay, which is really bad. Well, anyway, um, we're going to do an exercise related to this, which is not in the manual and it's not in the platform, but it's it's directly uh, related to it. It's 8.47. Yeah, we still have some time, so let's do this. What are we going to do here? Circle the correct word that describes each sentence. So number one, there's an example. Events in December 2010 led to the peaceful removal of Tunisia's prime minister in January 2011, okay? So what is that? Is it a natural disaster? Is it an epidemic or revolution? There's actually revolution, okay? Pacific revolution. Usually revolution is much more violent. But yeah, in this case, it's specific. What about number two? Who can help me read it? I want you to read the sentence and then choose one of the three words uh, that the sentence is an example of. Who wants to try number two? Lillian Estela. In 2009, a species of spider that eats plants was found in southern Mexico and Central America. Mm -hmm. uh, discover. Discovery. Discovery. That is correct. Okay, thank you, Lillian. In 2009, a species of spider that eats plants was found in southern Mexico and Central America. That's an example of a discovery. Number three, Ever de Jesus Candray. Number three, okay. On March 11, 2004, a series of bombing on a commuter train Commu line in Madrid. Commuter. Mm -hmm. Commuter mm -hmm. train line in Madrid, Spain, killed 121 people and wounded on 108. 1,000. What? 1,800. 1, okay, that is One, a terrorist act. It's a terrorist act. That is right. Yeah, thank you, Ever. 
So on March 11, 2004, a series of bombings on a commuter train line in Madrid, Spain, killed 191 people and wounded 1,800. That's an example of a terrorist act. Okay, thank you very much. Number four, Rosa Esmeralda. Advanced in space technology. 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 Mm -hmm. um, a, um, allowed. Allowed spacecraft to land on Mars in 19. 19. Mm -hmm. um, terrorist act. Terrorist act, 1997. Let's take a look. Advances in space technology allow the spacecraft to land on Mars in 1997. Is that a terrorist act? Are you sure? Um, I, no. Aha. Uh -huh. What is it? What is it? Is uh, mm -hmm. um, achievement. Achievement. A achievement. That is correct. Achievement. Okay. It's an achievement, un logro, right? Again, advances in space technology allow the spacecraft to land on Mars in 1997. That's an achievement, totally. Thank you, Rosa. Jose Luis, number five. Prime Minister Benazir Bhutto of Pakistan was killed after leaving a campaign rally in December 2007, mm -hmm. I think that's assassination. That's assassination. That is correct. Yeah, very good. So um, just give me a moment. Okay, so Prime Minister Benazir Bhutto of Pakistan was killed after leaving a campaign rally in December 2007. That's an example of an assassination. Okay, is the killing of a person for political reasons. Thank you, Jose Luis. And Alejandra Magaña, the last one, please, number six. In 2010, a series of floods in Australia affected over 200,000 people and caused nearly a billion Australian dollars in damage. Mm -hmm. That's a natural disaster. It's a natural disaster, absolutely. Yeah, that is correct. Thank you, Alejandra. Again, in 2010, a series of floods in Australia affected over 200,000 people and cost nearly a billion Australian dollars in damage. That's a natural disaster. It's a complete disaster when you think about it. Okay, great, everybody. Thank you for your participation. That was very good. So um, again, just remember to uh, review the words. They are achievement, assassination, disaster, discovery, epidemic, invention, terrorist act. There's also revolution, okay? Um, that's it. <laughs> Election also, and natural disaster in the end. So those are the words. Okay, so uh, what time is it? 8.53, okay, it's getting late. Um, just give me a second. What's next? Okay, um, we're just going to start with the next grammar topic because we will definitely not have the time to study it um, comprehensively. We're going to leave that for tomorrow, but we're going to begin today because we still have we still have like six minutes. So let's use the time correctly. Um, lesson objective, this is section 5.6 of the platform. By the end of this section, participants will be able to predict future using will, future continuous, and the future perfect. There's an empty space here. Yeah, that looks better. I'm gonna save. Okay, so what is that? I want you to take a look at this, predicting the future with will. Now, what is will? Will is a modal auxiliary verb. And there is a rule about modal auxiliaries. Let's see if you know it will some modal 
auxiliary verb. Okay. Model, model rules. Okay. Rule number one. Let's see. Models are always followed by verbs in base form. That's very important. Every time you have a modal verb, it's always followed by a verb in base form. Rule number two, models don't have a different form for the subjects, he, she, or it, okay? Those are two rules that you need to remember every time you're working with models. Like will, will is an example of a model. Other examples of models include can, should, could, would, may, might, etc. There are more. So again, what are the rules? The first one is models are always followed by a verb by verbs in base form. For example, you say, I will. Uh, I will study or yeah, I will study. This will be correct. But what happens if you say, I will to study, okay? This will be incorrect, okay? Because you're not using the base form of the verb anymore. I'm going to just move it here. I will study, I will to study will be incorrect. If you say, I will studying, okay, that will also be incorrect. If you say, I will studied, that would also be incorrect. What else? Yeah, I guess. Ah, or if you say, just to give you an idea, she will studies that would also be incorrect okay why is that very simple because will is some modal auxiliary verb and the first rule is models are always followed by verbs in base form que significa si usted tiene un modal auxiliary el siguiente verbo siempre tiene que ir en forma base y cuál es la forma base del verbo Es la forma del verbo que no tiene ninguna modificación. Es decir, study. What's the base form of study? Study. What's the base form of work? Work. What's the base form of play? Play. What's the base form of visit? Visit. What's the base form of the verb be? Be. Just like that. So after a model, you always use a verb in base form. If you say to study, that's a to infinitive. Incorrect. If you say studying, that's the ing form, incorrect. If you say studied, that's the past form, incorrect. If you say studies, that's present simple in third person singular form, it's also incorrect. The only correct form is the base form, okay? So that's a rule, no exceptions. So what is rule number two? Models don't have a different form for the subjects he, she, or it. So if I say, for example, I will study, same thing will happen if you say you will, let's just move this to make it clear. You will study, say we will study, they will study. Okay, so far so good. But what happens with he, she, and it? Say he, be careful. Again, the model doesn't have a different or special form for the subjects he, she, and it. So you say will, just like that. Never wills, okay? That doesn't exist, okay? He will study. You say she will study. And it will, well, no, it, creo que no. <laughs> so la gente puede estudiar. So she will study. So um, 
¿Qué significa esto? Que los model auxiliaries no tienen una forma especial para los sujetos he, she, or it. Así que nunca le voy a poner una S porque, ah, es que va con él, con he. No, eso no existe. Así que, porfa, nunca vaya a hacer eso. Tampoco vaya a hacer que diga, ah, pero como es con he, aquí le vamos a poner studies. No, esto está mal también. Allí están las dos reglas. Regla número uno, después del model, siempre va un verbo en forma base. Regla número dos, los models no tienen una forma especial para he, she, it. ¿Ok? No hay nada ahí. So you have to be careful. Así que, ¿qué vamos acá? Let's take a look. You use will, that's a model auxiliary, to predict future events or situations. Computers will recognize any voice command. You won't need a keyboard. These are predictions. So you use will for predictions. That's the use. You use the future continuous to predict ongoing actions. People will be living in cities under the ocean. And you use future perfect to predict actions that will be completed by a certain time. Examples, within 20 years, scientists will have discovered a cure for baldness. And by 2050 or 2050, we will have set up human communities on Mars. Now, we're going to go into detail tomorrow because it's nine, nine and one, so we need to finish the class. But tomorrow, as usual, there is more. You can see it here, but uh, this is for tomorrow. Okay, uh, now I'm just going to call the attendance one more time, just in case uh, I can't find it. Okay, here, attendance control. Cristina, Alejandra Cristina Magaña Campos. Be present. Thank you. Let's see. And uh, Paola Maria Alvarado Cerón. Present. Thank you. Okay, great. Full house today. Everybody's present. Me, teacher. Jasmine. Ya, ya, ya. La pusimos ahí. Jasmine, ahí está. Ya tiene la asistencia. Thank you. <laughs> Es que de, de, me acuerdo que no me había contestado, de pronto me participó y dije, ah, pues sí, ahí está, ya le puse ahí la asistencia. Ok. All right, ya todos están. Um, todos me aparecen como que han asistido a clase hoy, así que no se preocupe nadie, ¿verdad? Ok, everybody, thank you. Remember that we finish tomorrow. Um, según entiendo yo, los ejercicios en la plataforma, incluido también el examen final, ya tendría que estar resuelto hasta el día de hoy. Así que si le falta, le invito por favor que hagamos un último esfuerzo antes que se nos cierren los ojos para terminar eso, porque las notas y bueno, toda esa información, eh, según yo lo entiendo, se va a mandar ya el día de mañana. Yo no hago eso, de hecho ningún teacher hace eso, eso ya es control interno de inglés corporativo. ¿Verdad? Para los efectos eh, según lo uh, requerido por Insaforp. ¿Verdad? Así que, por favor, si no han terminado, terminemos eso. Everybody, thank you for your attention, for your patience, your participation, and your perseverance. I will see you tomorrow. Take care. Good night. See you tomorrow. Good night. Good night. Tomorrow. See you tomorrow.